Since I previously reviewed a video game based off Rambo First Blood Part 2, I figured why not review a game based off the movie's sequel? And I'm pleased to say that despite a few missteps, this Rambo game is as enjoyable as the previous one. So anyway, let's get into it. Rambo 3 for the Genesis. To start out, the game's graphics are quite good. The designers did an excellent job rendering both Rambo and the enemy troops. The visuals in the boss battles in particular look fantastic. In fact, they look so good that they could almost pass for a next generation game. There's also the well-made opening title screen. Overall, the game designers definitely deserve props in the visual department. My only real complaint about the visuals is the look of some of the levels. Some of the level design looks a little bit bland, especially level 2. It has this shit brown color that just doesn't look that great. Also, this game has some odd graphics. For example, the third level takes place in some kind of jungle. How the fuck did Rambo end up in a jungle in Rambo 3? Uh, if you'll recall, the movie was set in the deserts of Afghanistan. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's a lot of jungles in that country, if any. Who knows, maybe the game designers got the second movie confused with the third one. Or maybe they just didn't give a shit. Here's another thing. In level 2, you rescue Rutger Hauer. That's right, Rambo rescues Roy Batty. I wonder, did they get his permission to use his likeness, or did they just steal it? If the latter, I'm surprised he didn't sue them. Next comes the controls, and they're pretty simple. The control pad allows you to move Rambo left, right, up, and down. A allows you to select from three different special weapons. Rambo's knife, his bow and arrows, and time bombs. B allows you to use the selected special weapon. In addition, you can power up Rambo's bow and arrow by holding down the B button. When the bow and arrow box in the upper left hand corner turns completely red, then the arrow is at full power. And this means that you can destroy certain enemies with one shot. The C button is for the machine gun, which has infinite ammo. Honestly though, I'm not a big fan of this weapon. The problem with it is that instead of shooting straight ahead, it sprays bullets all over the place. And this makes it even harder to hit enemies. Now I get what they were going for, having Rambo spraying bullets all over the place like he does in the movies. But control-wise, I think it would have been much better if they just had Rambo shooting straight ahead instead of all over the fucking place. When I look at the gameplay, it kind of reminds me of Mercs for the arcade and the Genesis. Both Rambo 3 and Mercs have an exciting frenetic pace where the bad guys keep on coming and you have to mow down as many of them as you can get. However, there is a feature in Rambo 3's gameplay that makes it different from Mercs, and it's one that I like a lot. Namely, the game allows you to perform special tasks in certain levels. For example, in the second level, you have to rescue a secret agent and escape from a dungeon before it blows up. And in level 4, you have to destroy a certain amount of enemy weapons. Also, in levels 1 and 3, you have to destroy a gun wall to proceed to the next part. These tasks help prevent the game from becoming too repetitive. Additionally, in between certain levels, you fight boss vehicles using Rambo's bow and arrows. The first is a helicopter, the second is a tank, the third is two copters, and finally a copter and a tank. In all these levels, you have to target the vehicle or vehicles in question and power up your bow and arrow by holding down the B button. If you don't power it up enough, then the arrow won't do as much damage. But if you power it all the way, then sometimes you can score a one-hit kill. However, just standing still and powering up will put you at risk for being hit by the enemy's shots. So in some cases, you have to repeatedly dodge and keep on firing lower-powered shots until the enemy or enemies are destroyed. Despite being over far too quickly, these boss levels are a nice touch. One big issue I do have with the game, though, is the difficulty. Although it starts out pretty easy, it can get very hard after a short time. The game swarms you, and I mean fucking swarms you with enemies! Troops, gun towers, soldiers hidden in bushes, tanks, gun walls, choppers. It's like they sent the whole fucking Soviet army after Rambo! Look, I'm not against a game with a hard difficulty level in and of itself. It's just that, in this game, I wish the rise of the difficulty level hadn't been so sudden and steep. If it had been a bit more gradual, I think it would have worked much better. And I know that Rambo is supposed to be a one-man army himself, but even he would balk at this! 
Fortunately, you can select how many hits Rambo can take on the options screen. Also, he can collect certain icons to allow him to take more hits. They're smiley faces! Yes, smiley faces! Uh, just go with it. Anyway, you get these smiley faces by stabbing soldiers instead of shooting them. Plus, stabbing soldiers can give you extra bombs and arrows. The trade-off is the range. Getting close makes it easier for the soldiers to harm you. But sometimes it helps to have ammo for your special weapons, so occasionally you will have to kill them with a knife. Typically, though, using the machine gun is safer and more effective. Another issue is the length of certain levels. Some of them, particularly level 4, are way too long. If they made some of these levels a little bit shorter, I think they would have been more enjoyable. Funny enough, though, the last level is one of the shorter and easier ones. You just go through a maze and rescue Colonel Troutman. One other criticism I have is the game's faithfulness to its source material. Now normally, I wouldn't harp on this so long as the game is good. But this adaptation is really strange. It takes bits and pieces from the movie, but they don't add up to a coherent whole. For example, in level 2, you don't rescue Troutman. Instead, you save Roy Batty and the place blows up. Huh? Then you go into a jungle that has nothing to do with the movie. And in the last level, you save Troutman and blow up a helicopter and a tank. And that's it! What the hell happened to the last quarter of the movie? Where's the fight in the cave or that big final battle on the plane? Why can't I crash a fucking tank into a helicopter? When you compare the game's finale to the movies, the former comes off as very anticlimactic. And then you got weird shit like soldiers creeping up on you with bushes. What is this fucking shit? Is Elmer Fudd trying to kill me? I'm hunting Rambo. <laughs> Why did the game designers make all these bizarre and illogical changes to the movie? It's not like Rambo 3 lacked action scenes. If anything, the movie had more than enough action scenes that could be turned into good video game levels. But then they made these arbitrary changes in the plot for no apparent reason. It's almost as bad as Star Wars for the Famicom. But in the game's defense, at least the main bad guy doesn't turn into a fucking scorpion. For the most part, the game's music didn't grab me. However, there is one tune in the third and fifth level that I really liked. Here, listen. That tune really kicks ass. It's just too bad that the rest of the music isn't that memorable. When you look at Rambo 3 solely as an adaptation, it fails miserably. It makes odd changes to the movie's plot that don't improve the gameplay in any noticeable way. Frankly, I think they should have just left the movie's plot alone. But looking at Rambo 3 solely as a video game and not as an adaptation, it does really well. So in conclusion, I'm surprised yet pleased to recommend not one, but two Rambo games. It's good to see that these two games managed to avoid most of the mistakes that ruined the NES version. This is Film and Stuff, signing off. Thanks for watching. I'm hunting Rambo. <laughs>